Seven photographers are competing for a chance to win over 25,000 in cash and prizes. Today's challenge is in-camera double exposure. Are they up for the challenge? Let's see what they can do. I'm terrified. Hey Siri, set timer, 10 minutes. I'm not a storyteller, but I'm gonna be a storyteller. It's not giving me dancer. Oh, she's dancing. Well, you gotta go take that yeah, one. Here we go. I'm ready to rock them out. Today, one photographer is going home. Who will it be? Me. Welcome to the Creator Series. Today we're here at the Abbott in Kansas City. Competitors, today's challenge is in-camera double exposure using the Canon R5. At stake for the series winner, over 25,000 in cash and prizes from Canon, h and Color Lab, Background Town, and Westcott. Remember, you'll have 10 minutes to complete your challenge. After you complete your challenge, you'll hand me your card and return to the lounge. Once every competitor has completed their challenge, your cards will be returned and you will have 30 minutes to edit. And finally, the challenge winner will hang in the h and Wall of Fame. Today's challenge is double exposure and the winner will take home a 24 by 36 framed metal print valued at over $370. All of you have survived the first round, learned from your mistakes yesterday, all of you had them. So this is the time to make your portrait stronger and think about how the judging will go. Today's model is Amy Garrison. Good luck and let's see who goes first. What do we get? Show us what we got. Ah, oh, Deshaun going first. Yeah, I'm ready. Who's going last? I'm going last. <laughs> so I'm guessing many of you have either never done double exposures or if you have done it, probably not on the Canon system. Is that a fair assessment? So we're gonna do a little tutorial. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Double exposure in Canon is super simple. It's built into their menu. Once you enable it, it's two frames. So we're gonna work with additive mode where it's adding those two frames. But the way that's gonna work is it's with your highlights and shadows. So you have to think through that. It's going to be in continuous mode, meaning every two frames you take, it will reset, start again. So the first image you take is a ghost image and it will stay there. Now, when I go and maybe I, I take a highlight, now we'll combine those images to create that additive feature. So I think in the beginning, you're gonna have to spend a little bit of time figuring out what we want, right? So if I'm in your shoes, what we're looking for is the creativity of it. You can shoot the model and then take a picture of the chandelier. Take two pictures of Amy. Use some of the flowers and other items that are there. Think through what judges are going to be looking for. We're looking for creativity. Freaking out? Yeah. Series two, we were not gonna be easy on these challenges. All right, so let's talk about one of the giveaways from h and Color Lab. What the winner of today's challenge is going to get is a framed metal print. Something worth highlighting here, and I'll read off all the specs for you. First of all, it's a matte metal, which is just amazing, right? Yeah, there's a place for gloss, but it gets very high glare. In an environment like this, where there is some light coming in for your client's homes, through the windows, I like this matte finish, and there's no substitute for the color. The color is still beautiful on an image like this, and you're seeing it's a very colorful image there but I think what makes it that next level product is adding the frame to it so I'm a big fan of offering these to our clients so that they're just not a metal print it's now a framed metal print or a framed canvas and I think that elevates the product but let me give you the specs these are deep set contemporary framing that's going to add a finished look to your metal print and provide a beautiful modern presentation for your wall art h h does all the work for you all framed metal prints have slightly rounded corners within the frame and come complete with a frame backer paper and bracket and they are ready to hang available in sizes from 8x10 to 24x36 so again this is that product that our challenge winner today will win 24x36 an absolutely beautiful product add it to your home add it to your studio and i promise your clients are going to want it want a chance to win h and h's featured product today go down into the description click on the link and head over to our website there you'll enter to win and every week someone will win the featured product from h and h we're doing double exposures, and this is something that I really love. I've been doing it since film, so I am ready to take my graphic design knowledge and make a composition right in camera, so I'm ready. All right, Sean, what are we starting with? What lens? I want to do the 50. 50? Yeah. All right, I think that's actually a good call for this challenge. Yeah. Let's select light. What are you thinking? Let's go big. Large, large octa? Okay, and then the next thing, Deshaun, let's pick a background. That's the one? Yeah, Muddy Muslim. Muddy Muslim. Moody Muslim. Oh, Moody Muddy Moody. <laughs> Let's get it up. Does that look the way you want? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. We're off to the races. Okay. Hey Siri, set timer, 10 minutes. And then give me like a, like you like walk. a sassy walk. Yeah. Right there, stop. 
Tell me what you want me to do. I'm here for you, Deshaun. Uh, uh, bring this life. Yes, yeah, good. You want me to walk with her, Deshaun? Come on, man. Five, four, three, two, one, time. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I think it went phenomenal. I got some good frames for the double exposures. I can't wait to make it big so I can really see what I got. We have some really creative things. If I do say so myself, I'm ready to rock them out. All right, there we go. First victim down. Worst challenge ever. <laughs> Who's number two? Let's do it, Chris. Come on. So I had two or three images in my head um, that I know that I could create, um, but with that 10 minute time, I think there's one that I'm gonna do. Um, I think I'm gonna try to do a classic silhouette and then have another image in front of that silhouette. I think that's gonna be the easiest for me um, to do in the time constraints. All right, Chris, what lens are we choosing today? Today, I'm gonna go with my workhorse, the 28 to 70, 24 to 70? 28, 70. 28, 70, yep. It's your workhorse, you I should know it, what it well, is. I felt like you were guessing on what your workhorse was. But let's pick lighting, what are you, what are you thinking for this? Um, so I want to do, for my, my background image, I want to do just a classic silhouette. So I think I want her in front of a bigger big, light source. A big Octavox. Do you want an Octa or do you want the 3-4? Um, let's do the 3-4. Okay, I think that's, for what you're saying, I think that's a better call. I'm gonna do a sideways shot of her head and silhouette on this. So you want the light here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because then after that, then I'm gonna switch to here. And I'm gonna that. get a shot of her on the background that's gonna be inside that silhouette. Any seconds in front of this? Think efficiently. It's a lot of movement. You do what you want. I'm just saying you're gonna lose time moving her. Hey Siri, set timer, 10 minutes. All right, let's rock and roll. So what do you want going on in here with your second shot? My my idea is like uh, like a silhouette and then she's thinking about being a dancer. You okay. know, that's my story. So I like the story, but the execution isn't happening yeah, 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 in my yeah. opinion. I, I why? agree. Tell me why you think it's not happening. Um, it's, not, it's not giving me dancer. Okay. Um, uh, She's thinking about being a dancer. You see it or no? Yeah, no, this is I, see your it. Shot. Yeah, yeah, I see it. I see it. I see it. Okay. You have to adjust from there. Time. I think I made the right choice. It was still a lot of running back and forth to get the two frames that I wanted, but having one shot set up and then the other shot set up so that I didn't have to move lights and I could just go from one to the other back and forth again and again until I got it perfect. I think I made the right choice. We'll see what the judges think. So let's talk about some of the backgrounds that are being used. These are all from Background Town and they are running a special for you guys. Any background site-wide, if you're watching during the week of the broadcast, 60% off on week two. If you're watching after we've been live for the first week and episode three airs, go to the link below, go to our website, and you will see specials that they are running for you, but they will not be this aggressive. But this is one that I think is worth bringing attention to. It's called Green Renaissance 2, and it is a floral pattern, but muted. So this is really good for seniors, fashion work in studio, and then something worth you know adding to your backdrop repertoire, if you would, right? You wanna have a black, you wanna have a white, you wanna have a gray, but then at some point you wanna start adding floral patterns. And one of the things I like about this is it's made of fleece, right? So it's just like a fleece blanket, very soft, foldable, and very easy to travel with. So something worth adding to your overall kit. And again, if you purchase during the week of this broadcast of episode two, 60% off any backdrop. All right, number two, okay. let's give it up. Woo! Guys, that time is no joke. <laughs> you will run out of time this time. All right, here we go. Who's number three? Margo? Okay. She can't see. I can't see? What the Well, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, it could be like a quadruple exposure for you. I am thinking about going with, my base is silhouette. 
I want her to kind of throw the dress and take the silhouette with her throwing the dress on my first scene and then probably adding in the flowers. See how that works. I think with the blue, with the silhouette bringing in the flowers, I think that's gonna be hot in my mind. <laughs> the second one, I want something more classic and then adding some element. I was thinking about the stairs or adding some kind of shadow. See what we can get. I think the second one is gonna be a little creative. Don't know just yet, but I wanna go with the first one. Hopefully that's the winner. All right, Margo, what lines are we going with? I think I'm gonna go with the um, 28. 2870? All right, let's pick some lights. All right. I am thinking about going with the big All right, so we got three, four. Uh, is that it, one light? I think one light for now. Okay, and let's pick uh, a backdrop. I think I wanna go with the Serenity. So tell me what you're thinking of doing. So I want some kind of toss element okay. in the silhouette. So some motion. Some motion in it, and then I wanna bring in the flowers. And lay that over. And lay that over. Okay, so you got one test shot okay. I'm gonna give you. One, two, three. Okay, so that's your base. Okay. Now what do you wanna do for the second image? Because it's looking for the second image. This one, All right. and the light. Hey Siri, set timer, 10 minutes. Is that good? Go back how you have the thumb, just a pinch, or a Yeah? One, two, three, throw. Let's turn to completely this way and then bring that hand in the back. A four minutes to perfect it. All right, 20 seconds to spare. Let's dance, let's dance. Oh, she's dancing. Good Thank job. you so much. Good job, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God, that was the best experience ever. I think it went okay. Um, I'm very pleased with the outcome. I'm sweating bullets. My concept was I wanted to capture her beautiful body, um, her face, she has strong neckline and jawline. I wanted to highlight that. And then what I did was I added the floral elements to it. I used the Serenity background, which made it excellent. So let's see what I picked. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, who's next? Let's go, Anthony. I'm not a storyteller, but I'm gonna be a storyteller. Um, she's kind of a dancer, and she's kind of peacefully thinking about when she was a dancer. So I'm kind of gonna do this like portrait, and then her kind of hopefully dancing in the background. That's that's what we're kind of going with. For lighting, I kind of want to light her really soft, and then probably soft, just kind of changing it up, reading from left to right, just kind of flowing through the image. So that's how I want to light it. So hopefully, that'll that'll work out. All right, Anthony, what lines are we going with? 28 to 70. 28 to 70, good. I think what I want to do is, I definitely want to use beaded, and I'm going to have that camera right, and then for my second image of the double exposure, I think I want to just do the strip box. Okay, so one light on both setups? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm going to go with the Annie's look. Okay. Hey Siri, set timer, 10 minutes. Let's go. Perfect, any other gorgeous. Just like that. You got three minutes, Anthony. I think you can pull off. Let's get three frames. Okay. Right? Let's move a little more deliberate. I missed it. Don't give me that look. <laughs> Did you see that face? <laughs> Did you see the face? He's like, oh, yeah. I'm good. Time. Oh, you want to hear that I have the best assistant? Yeah. Yeah, I got paid to say that, but I didn't. Today went a lot better than yesterday. I think yesterday my nerves got the best of me and I was very happy to make it through. I spent a lot of time thinking about my composition and what I wanted to accomplish when I was in the lounge and Amy was great to work with and I just think we really got what I wanted. So I'm excited to look at them in post. All right, all right. That was fun. Like, literally fun. It is a good team, and we did the things, and y'all gonna be so excited. All right, who's next? Me and five. All right, let's go, baby. Yesterday's winner and champion. You ready for today? I'm terrified today. I have absolutely no idea what I'm gonna do. Um, it's in God's hands at this point, whatever the outcome is. So I'll play with the ideas that I have in my head, and hopefully I can get them all done, and then hopefully one of them just ends up being a winner for me. All right, Andre, what lines are we going with? Um, 28 to 70. 28 to 70, yeah, that is an old faithful. All right, lighting, what are we thinking? 
I might do the four by three today. Okay, let's do that. So let's pick a backdrop for you. Oh, this is kind of great, huh? Yeah, let me take this one. All right, so Annie's Lux Copper Medium. What's your shot set up? What are we doing? So I'm gonna do a couple things. We're gonna try to do something like with the dress and like pull some florals there and try to incorporate okay. that. And I think we're gonna try to do like an alter ego kind of thing. We'll get a test frame before you start worrying about every detail about her to make sure conceptually you like it. 100%. And then we're off to the races and I'm here to help. All right, here we go. Hey Siri, set timer, 10 minutes. All right, let's go. Look back, look at me, but eyes at me. Ready? Sorry, Sal, I forgot you got, here to I'm gonna do my job, Andre. <laughs> Ready and three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. Damn it. Four minutes. Come on, time. Oh, this, this one was a struggle as I knew it would be a struggle for me, but hopefully I have something in here. I wasn't able to get a lot done in the 10 minute time frame. A lot of technical difficulties figuring out this particular uh, technique, but hopefully I have enough that'll pull me through to the next round. All right, all right. All right, who's next? Let's go, Laura, come on, girl. You ready? A little redemption today? Oh yeah. So I am planning on using gels and I'm gonna use two different colors. In the beginning, we're gonna use a blue gel and then we're going to explode into a red gel. I'm really excited about this. I've never done this before on digital, only in film. So we're gonna see if we can do it today. What lens are we going with? We're gonna do the 85. 85, all right. Let's see what we're doing for light. What are you thinking? So I wanna light her with a blue gel. Blue gel, but what size box? Probably not. Okay, so we'll go with an Octa and then a blue gel. I'm gonna use... Blue gel. Blue gel, yep, blue gel. And I also need a red gel. And a red gel. And false scarlet. Okay, and then we'll get a false scarlet, perfect. I'm a bit of a rookie. If I were ready for this, I would have pre-gapped. So now I'm gonna put you in double exposure mode. So we're gonna turn it on. It's gonna be on, so every two frames you pop. If you don't like your first frame for whatever reason, just pop another one, clear it, start over. Okay. My advice to you, you do whatever you want. It's your shoot, I'm here to help. Okay. Get your concept dialed in. Make sure it's looking right. Don't obsess about posing right now. We'll lose too much time. Hey Siri, set timer, 10 minutes. Step out and move when I count to three, okay? Yes. Um, with the dress, with, with the gown, yep, yep. She's stepping to her left or her right? She is stepping to her left. left. To your right, our left. Five minutes. One, two, three. One, two, three. Time. A lot of work. It was way harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Just using two lights, getting everything um, to sync up where I wanted the model. But I think I got at least one that's really good, so I'm excited to get into the editing. All right, let's stop for a second and talk about the equipment that the creators are using on the show. Everyone is using the Canton R5 mirrorless system. And one of the things I love about this, of course, I'm using it in my everyday business. So I'm using it for my weddings, my seniors, video production. In fact, this video is being produced using the R5. It films up to 8K and 45 megapixel on the still. So this is a great all around workhorse for your business. And then one of my favorite features, and I know all digital cameras have added this in some form or fashion, but their facial recognition and tracking, I should say, is second to none. Humans, animals, cars, planes, they've added all these features into the tracking and it is incredible how well this works. And so your images will be tack sharp. All right, all right. She had a tough one, man. She definitely had a tough one. She had a good concept. We had to work hard to get it. So we'll see what she, she got. I didn't get to see the final one, so I hope you did get it. All right, Tabitha, let's go. Got it. Work it. Woo! 
Okay, I actually do have a plan. This is gonna be very storytelling, so I hope I can do the model and I hope I can do um, the story justice. I want to split light her, so I'm gonna make this side as black as I can. I wanna bring in some harsh elements and make her really happy, so that way it shows the element of putting on this happy and bright, colorful face when really in the back of our minds we're struggling. And I think a lot of us will be able to go with that. All right, top of the what's your lens? We're gonna do 24 to 70. 2870? 2870, yes, yeah, okay. sorry. 2870 F2. Let's talk lighting. What are you thinking? Beauty dish. Beauty I dish. Want a beauty so we'll do the Manny Ortiz beauty dish. Just one light. Yeah. yeah. What, um, well, I want a beauty dish for her, and I do need something for the backdrop. Camera right? Uh, left. Camera left. Sorry, it's just what I have in my head. Yeah, you. that's how we're working. This is your photo shoot. Let's pick your backdrop. Yeah. Not need help with. I know I can't get help, so this is the backdrop I want to use. Yeah. Um, so we're going to set up the uh, dark floral neon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so let's take a test shot. I only have so long afterwards to yeah, take a Yeah, if you take too shot. much time for your um, second shot, it's going to... When you start the time, then before you set that, can I go ahead and get my second? Yeah, you know Does what that you're make doing. Does that make yeah, sense? Can I do that faster. real quick? Yeah, I get it. Hey Siri, set timer, 10 minutes. kind of in the middle, so this can be just kind of on the edge of her a little bit, yeah, both sides. Well, this you can put into manual focus and yeah. make this blurry. Yeah, I need to do that. So, well, Bye. you gotta go take that yeah, one. Sorry. Blurry. Time check. Time check is 526. Yeah, yeah there we go, because I was like, Get last closer. time. Get closer. Because last time he told me that it just looked like something was in my camera versus mm -hmm. what I was trying to do. But I yeah. think that's good. It's your concept. It's really good. Time. What I had planned actually was not executed, but I got a photo. And at that, I'm just happy about getting a picture to work with. <laughs> that's terrible. But yeah, that's what I'm just, I have something to work with. So that's all we can do. All right, so let's talk about some of the lighting on set that's being used today by the creator. So something that came out is the uh, Westcott FJ80. Now, today I'm using the FJ80, the original, uh, and they've released the FJ80 version two. These put out 80 watts per second, and in the new light, you've got 20% more capacity and over 500 full power flashes on one battery recharge. So you're gonna get plenty of versatility out of a light like this. And you can see the way we used it today, we just use the feet. We can attach this to a light stand if need be, but we were just using it to illuminate some of the background. And so a very versatile light that you can have in your kit and works with the entire FJ Westcott system. All right, last one. I'm sweaty. All right, let's sit down. We're gonna give you your cards. All right, so overall, what do we think of the uh, challenge today? I thought it was awesome. It was, it was very hard. creative. I hate all of them. Oh, wow. <laughs> Tough, made you think like artists a little bit, yeah. right? Got you out of your element. And if I'm in your shoes, I'm thinking, when I walk out of here, I can't wait to start messing with double exposures. All right, so you know the drill. You're gonna have 30 minutes to edit uh, your images. These are not meant to be straight out of camera. The double exposure had to be straight out of camera but you should finalize these images and make them as perfect as can be, all right? Let's get to it. All right. Wrap it up, save, you know the drill. Today's challenge was multiple exposure in camera. So we did limit them to two exposures and they had to do it in camera and they were consecutive frames, right? So I didn't allow them to use the feature in camera where they could pick and choose what they were overlaying. So they had to work hard to take that first frame and make the second frame fit. And if it didn't fit, they had to go shoot the first frame again. Yeah. All in all, uh, I will also say none of them uh, had ever done a double exposure. Uh, so I gave them a little tutorial this morning, but they all had about 60 seconds of tutorial time. Uh, and so all in all, I'm very happy and proud of them, but now is their final images, all right? With a double exposure, you can't just show up and shoot. You really do have to give some thought into right. what you're gonna do. And the challenge is exacerbated for them because they are limited to this set, lighting choices, and whatever additional elements we have here, all right? We've all seen some of those incredible award-winning double exposures. 
but it's, it's different because they have a lot more time and a lot more to work with. This is very tough to do in such a short amount of time without ever doing it before, and I'm actually super they impressed. I am impressed well. with them. Yeah. Like, this is seriously no I'm joke. I'm so proud of them. Yeah. I didn't force them to use studio light, by the way, and that was a choice they made, which I thought it lent to the portrait, but some of the ideas that came through were very ambitious, but mm -hmm. they all were a little bit different. That's every image. Now the task that lies ahead of us is being able to select a winner, but let's talk a little bit about each image so we kind of know uh, where we're at. This is going to be hard to eliminate someone from. Yes. I know. So this is going to be really hard. This was a great image. Um, it's like her dream, right? Being a dancer. Yeah. That's and, what it was giving to me too. Right? Yeah. I, I love that you both said that because that is exactly what the vision was for the image creator. So when I was working with them, that was their vision. I said, what are we doing? And that's exactly what they said. So the fact that you both said it means from, you know, concept to processing, well done. And I like how she's looking towards the light. Like yeah. there's an optimism there. It's lending to the story. Actually, you're right. The lighting on the main photo is uh, almost like a cinematic format of dream lighting, mm. right? Like, and then she has that image in her brain. It's quite complex. It's did such a good job with the high key lighting. Like look at all the, there's still texture through here. But... I want to add to the complexity here only because you weren't there while they were doing this. They had to shoot this main image uh, of her and then reset with a different light setup right. to take the secondary so that it's less image. That and, was a lot of work. In 10 and minutes? look at the, yes. Yeah. And look at the oh. motion yes. in the dress, right? Yeah, so that motion. Sick, man. Yeah, it's a great job. So same thing here, kind of a high key image and then using, you know, kind of blurry flowers. Um, oh, the, the color is the second element? The color is the second element in okay. this So shot. unfortunately, this is the one that to me, those two things don't go together, whereas the first right. one, they completely go together. Like they this do. one is like, okay, what are the, the colors story. doing? Yeah. Why is it there? Whereas the first one is very clear. This is the message. Yeah, I agree with you on that. It, that first shot is just clean, my God. This one um, doesn't make sense to me at all, yeah. even worse than the second one. Story-wise, I don't know that there's going I don't get to be. The story. I don't know that you're going to get a whole lot of storytelling. But the right? writing is you gorgeous. You don't see the nose popping out, and that's yeah. the only thing. That's, that's, True. That's, that's from that perspective. I agree. That's like, bad news. That's, right. But I feel like this shot is cleaner than that second shot. So I would rank this shot Let's higher. Let's go back than to the second, second shot. shot. Okay. But at least this has composition that makes sort of okay. She's feeling the yeah. frame sure. with the lights. Whereas the next one is like the nose. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and and to be fair, compositionally speaking, coming in from the top left it's tough to make it, it down here, right? I agree it's, with that. Yeah, during this, I think they were, right, just want to make a double exposure. Yeah. Mentally, they're not, and even within their skill set, they're not at a point where they're comfortable enough with- Telling a story. Telling a story, because yeah. they're just worried yeah. about a double exposure, right? Yeah, technically they're thinking about it, they're not thinking of technical, and then add artistic elements, and then add story elements, and it's, that's quite the ask for a 10 minute job, <laughs> right, you know? Right. But some of them got it, so clearly it can be done. Yes. Yeah. This right here is a favorite of mine. I love the color, the red and the blue, the lighting on, on her face. Expression maybe could have been a little bit better. Hands aren't too bad in this, uh, but I like the directionality of it. Uh, this to me is a favorite for sure. So when I look at this, Sal and Taylor, like in my opinion, this is one of the most beautiful photos in the set. But then when I think of the, the competition is double exposure, this doesn't tell a story. It doesn't, it, it very easily could have been gotten in one shot. Yeah, it is. It, it, some it, this is, this is a no story double exposure, whereas the first one still destroys the challenge. Of, because that first person used double exposure to tell the story. Yeah. So this person thought, this is the challenge, this is the technique I need to use, and then they decide, they somehow managed to tell a story within that challenge. It's pretty amazing. I agree. You see why I picked up my, my marker quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I had a day I was ready. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> I was ready to go. Uh, although this is a phenomenal image on its own. And this is the other I love the story amazing here. storytelling. Yeah, this is kind of a butterfly. What this tells me is every performer has a shy side. Mm -hmm. They're all insecure. They're performing, they work really hard, so they don't embarrass themselves on stage. And this shows the, the vulnerable side of the artist. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's beautiful storytelling. Here, she's taking up all the space. Here, she's taking up a minimal space. And then the use of color in the, in the free person, and then the lack of color, the kind of like ghoulishness. Well, so let's go back to complexity. They worked with two gel lights. Yes. The slumped over version was with a blue gel. Mm -hmm. They had to get that second shot yeah, with the, the red the gel. Red. And, and so I would say this particular, the maker of this image probably had the most ambitious thought process. Mm -hmm. Execution wise, I'm not sure it was done as well as that first image, but it's a very, very strong image. And creatively, conceptually, I think their brain is on a different level. Right?
right? Which is uh, something I want to reward, you know? If you're comparing those two images, mm -hmm. the, technicalities. Are, the technicalities of them, you've got that right wing cut off, tonal range throughout, I'm not sure as, as strong as it could be. There needs to be more mm -hmm. DB work done in here to keep me within range. So this to me is, is complete. I'm not debating the story that you're bringing to the forefront, that's true. But we've got a good story here and good execution here. Do you agree with that? I agree. This is great. It's one of the weaker ones for me. I would agree with you. It's weaker. It's not the person that's jumping out at me to eliminate. It is a good double exposure. Mm -hmm. There are things that... What's the second element? I can't tell. It's the flowers. Oh, like that first one, but I feel like this one was the better. But look at her expression. To me, this, this photographer, if she was smiling or acting normal, it wouldn't make sense. But her expression... It's like she's in this trance. The pensiveness of it. Yes, and then this background is like all her thoughts and everything going through her mind. And mm. it's, it's got this noisy thing going on and her expression goes with that. So there is a story here. I feel like this could have been done in camera as well. Yeah, like, I agree with you that it could have been done one in shot. camera. And I don't want to get too hung up on story. Not that story's not important. I think right. that's what's leading us to the winner. In my opinion, okay. this to me is the weakest image I think of the group. The nose photo minus that element was executed a little better. Here, we don't have a clean image on either. If you look at what's cleanest, I go to her chest, these crazy hairs, the overexposed high. We've left the background stand in the background. That's something that could have been cleaned up to make this feel a little bit more cohesive as an image. Of all the images we're looking at, to me, this, this is, is the weakest. Yes, I agree. So if we look at these two images, I like the tones of this bottle. At least this one has proper hair exposure. I'm not disagreeing with you on the on the nose. I, that is that is a fail right there. Mm -hmm. And story-wise, it's just not there. But just to be a photographer, we should know how to expose. Exactly. Fundamentals of photography, double exposure or not, you still need to get a strong base image. What's in focus, it's clear. Highlights have not been blown. Mm -hmm. When we get to this image, I'm not the only thing that's in focus her is, is her chest and her left arm. This it, to me, this is very lazy. This part of it being left in here with the background stand. And look here, this gap, mm -hmm. I can't stop staring at yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, what did they do to the photo other than grade it? Is it retouched in any way? I don't see anything in skin or hair or background. Like what is, what's been touched for yeah. 30 minutes? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, time for us to vote. All right. Let's put them here. Do we have agreement? Do we? <laughs> Lockstep. <laughs> all right, so we feel comfortable that we have a winner? Yes. We're all in agreement, in agreement this time. <laughs> all right, let's send it to print. All right, creators, what an incredible day two it was for the challenges. I know you guys were pretty excited about what you were able to capture. It was no easy task. And so we talked to the judges. I explained to them that all of you had only about five or 10 minutes uh, we'll call it training. I, I think that's a loose term, uh, but an explanation to you of what a double exposure was and how to do it within the uh, Canon system. And so, first of all, hats off to all of you. You all did an incredible job. It was tough, but it wasn't tough for us to go through this. But so everyone did a great job. I just want to lay that out before we get into this, okay? Our judges today, on my left, Taylor Brumfield. She's a Westcott Top Pro, Tamron Ambassador, and a commercial product and beauty photographer. To my right, is Roberto Valenzuela. He's a Canon Explorer of Light, best-selling author, and a fashion commercial photographer. All right, so let's start with the uh, winning image. As you know, the winning image is going to get a 24 by 36 frame metal print from h and H, $370 value. And of course, you'll make it to the next round. So let's bring up that first image. Chris Grande, pull up. Chris, I will tell you, there was a lot of discussion among the judges right out of the gate, and we all agreed that this was today's uh, winning image. So let me give you some feedback on it. Uh, you did an incredible job. What did it for you was vision. Uh, so this was one of the very few images that didn't get stuck just in creating a double exposure, but also had a vision and a meaning behind it. There was a story behind it. Immediately, I didn't give them any feedback. Obviously, I was working the image with you. Both of them said the same thing. She's dreaming of being a dancer almost at the same time. And that was your original vision. As I said, we saw the vision. It was very present, it was very there. 
the story was clear. Um, that's something I can definitely appreciate because not only did you obviously hit the challenge, very clearly you hit the challenge, you also told a story. And that takes skill to be able to do that in such a short amount of time. So congratulations on that, good for you. I also really just like how clean this image is. The lighting in the high key with her looking towards the light, that was really well done. And to have all that light on that hair while she's still somewhat obscured into shadow, that took some real skill. And then as Sal was explaining, that second image was a completely different lighting setup. That's super clever. And that really took some thought. And I can really appreciate that, so good for you. My only concern here is the lack of retouching on the skin. It just looks a little bit rough. I would have gone down and maybe blended down some of those lines. But that's my only feedback, and that's just me being nitpicky as a beauty photographer. That being said, the story is there, and you really hit the challenge. You destroy this challenge, man, because that catch light on her eye is her vision. And that vision without that catch light on her eye wouldn't have worked. You turn the technique of double exposure and you turn it into a freaking story. I was just like, what the hell is that? And that is the winner, you know what I mean? Congrats, man. Your journey continues. Good job. All right, next image. Come on forward, Margo. Now, Margo is a great image. You did a great job with it. So technically, the image is there. I can tell what the double exposureiness of it is. So you hit the challenge. My only concern is I don't necessarily see a story. So it's like you, you hit the challenge. I think that's the fundamental aspect. And it's a, it's a clean image, but I don't understand the story. So I would have liked there to be a little bit more of a storytelling aspect and not just objectively hitting the challenge. I think take it to the next level. Um, and if you're going to continue being competitive within this, this competition, there needs to be that extra step there. And I think a lot of you, understandably so, right? You had 10 minutes to pull this off, but you got stuck in the idea of just creating a double exposure and it ended there. There was no story uh, being told. I think Taylor's feedback is very on point and something we do need to consider as we move forward through the series, all right? Margo, congratulations. Your journey continues. Next image. You had a clean image, man. It was a well done double exposure. You have the double exposure, it's clear. Exposure on the hair is good. Exposure on the skin is good. Now let's talk about what derailed you, right? There's no connection. It's like fish soup with chocolate cake on top. It doesn't make any sense, but the execution was good. And then the nose, I'm reading from top left to right. I'm trying to read, is she smelling herself? Well, what's going on with the nose? It's the only thing you're featuring on the double exposure. And I think this is a matter of pressure and time because I think you would have noticed that. So based on the fact that you were limited in time and you have all this pressure, I get it. But for feedback, that's what I would say. And what saved you on this particular image was the clean image, right? That base image was clean. It saved you, fell apart on the story. Um, as far as the fish soup goes, I don't know. Uh, we'll just we'll just let that go. We'll let it go. We'll let it go. But Anthony, congratulations. Your journey continues. All right, next image. Andre, step up. This was a great image, Andre. It is a double exposure, but what tripped all the judges up was that this could have been captured as a single exposure, right? So the double exposure facet of it was just kind of lost in translation, if you will, but this is still a strong image, right? Compositionally speaking, uh, it's really good. Coming in left to right, she's looking off into the open frame, good retouching, good lighting on her. So we did a lot of the fundamentals right. You're continuing on as being the challenge one winner. Uh, so we're seeing strong images come out of you, but we've got to get back to the challenge and task at hand. And of course, making sure that we're telling that story moving forward. But Andre, congratulations. Your journey continues. Next image. Laura, step up. Laura, congratulations, right? I was with you on this and your vision for double exposure was by far the most ambitious uh, of any of the competitors uh, this time. Now, it fell short, right? We talked about this, you know, like, hey, vision's one thing, execution's another. And so you did a lot of things great. You were rewarded for that. You're moving on to the next round. I gotta tell you, when I saw this image, 
it got me emotional. The reason is I'm a performer. I, I used to be a classical guitarist. And when you go on stage, people see the performing side of you. They don't see the vulnerability and the endless hours of work and how insecure you may feel regardless of how much you have worked and practiced your pieces. When I saw this, I just thought that lady there is the vulnerable one on the bottom and the performer is the top one that people see. And the fact that she's taking so much space is like, I am grand, I am the performer. And then the shy, conservative, vulnerable person in the bottom right is the, is the stuff people don't see. You almost won this challenge because of that. And I just thought I was blown away by the story and your execution. And I was just like, wow, this person is incredible. So congrats. Thank you so well much. Well done. Congratulations, Laura. Your journey continues. We're down to the last two. The image we show next, right? You'll come forward. Next image. Tabitha, come forward. I, when I was looking at the photo, I didn't immediately see the double exposureiness of it. Um, I feel like this could have been done in one shot. Um, so I wish the double exposure was more obvious. Uh, as well as the use of the lighting, I feel like it was a bit dark. Now that being said, I think that that lends itself to the story. There's like a pensiveness um, in the model's gaze, kind of she's maybe looking off into maybe the future or thinking about what's to come. I think that the dark behind her is maybe like something that she's leaving behind. So I like that there is a story here um, and I can appreciate that because I know that in a tiny amount of time, it's hard to think past the challenge into kind of that next step, which is storytelling. So that's something I really appreciate here. I just wish that the, uh, the double exposure aspect would have been a little bit more obvious. Tabitha, congratulations. Your journey continues. Deshaun, step forward, my friend. Tough challenge today. You went first, I tripped you up. You didn't have as much time as everybody else to, to prepare. I know you did your best. We were working together on this, but I do want to give you some feedback on this. The judges were unanimous in their decision uh, on this particular image. And one of the things that tripped you up, of course, it is obvious that it is a double exposure, but it is either the final execution or post-production that really held this image back. And I'll, I'll really point to specifics for you because you're an incredible photographer. There's more great work to come out of you, but these little mistakes have to be fixed. What the judges got stuck on in this particular image is focus area. If you look at her face in both exposures, they're both soft. The sharpest part of that image is her chest and her left arm. And that's where the problem lies for us, right? There's clearly no story there. And then we got lost in that kind of circular area under her left arm where the light stand is still there. It was not a complete image. Uh, from the judges and not as strong as your fellow competitors for this task. So unfortunately, your journey does not continue, but it's not over for you, my friend. Keep out there, keep pushing it. Hopefully you had a great time yeah. and we'll see you in the future. All right. All right, thank you, my friend. And for everyone watching at home, we know you have an opinion on who you think should have won and we want to hear from you. So go in the link in the description, uh, click on it, go to our creator series season two page, cast your vote for who you think should have won uh, challenge number two. We'll see you in the next episode. That was unexpected. Um, I was honestly worried that what I did was too safe with the white background and, and things like that. Storytelling is what I do. The double exposure had to have a purpose. Um, so that's what I went with and I'm beyond grateful that, that that came through to the judges and they understood what I was doing. That's that's the best possible thing I could have asked for. I am pretty sad about losing this round and going home, but you know, as people always say in reality shows and competitions, it was a good experience and I'm glad to be here. Um, I'm gonna keep on pushing and keep on working and keep on creating. Thank God for this opportunity and this chance to work with all of these great, amazing photographers.